When Christianity was new, two of its early heroes, the apostles John and Peter, were taken before the Jerusalem council. Their crime? Healing a man who had been lame since birth, now more than 40 years old. When asked by whose authority they had done this, they replied, Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. What seemed to have impressed these judges of the council was not the eloquence of Peter and John, but their ignorance. And they marveled that fishermen from Galilee would stand before them, a place where weak-kneed criminals might melt, and be so bold in their proclamation of the Christ. At this they were astonished. But let's focus on the real story here. For what were these two men being called on the carpet? They are being judged in a public court for performing an act of kindness in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Now if they had simply healed the man and walked away, people would have been drawn to them. But it was the source of their kindness that caused the Jewish leadership to fear them and to need to do something with them. What the leaders feared was this, that the apostles possessed a power that they, the leaders, could not contain. What do you do with an enemy who does good deeds in the name of someone you would like to dismiss? There's not much you can do other than confess that there's power in that name. If we are true believers, the power that resides in us cannot be contained either. Those who dislike and disregard our belief in Jesus will be forced to bite their tongue. You and I are not going to be dragged in front of a civil court for being kind, but we are being judged in the court of human opinion. We might even be despised for doing good works in the name of Christ. Notice the prayer that was prayed by the brethren after Peter and John were released. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. The words that Peter and John spoke to the lame man were minimal. The words they spoke before the council were few. All they claimed is that the good deed they did was done in Jesus' name. When we talk about being bold and being a witness for Jesus, this is what we mean. We don't need to be eloquent or preach people over into our camp. We need to be kind and simply tell the truth about where good things come from, from God through Jesus. That doesn't require education, credentials, lofty intelligence, or a lot of money. It requires faith coupled with a little boldness. Let their prayer for boldness be ours, and let us do good deeds in Jesus' name.